Welcome to Adventures in X and A, Part 4B. It's time to make our title screen for our game. Uh, you can really put a lot of work into your title screens, uh, but I'm going to keep this pretty basic for the sake of time. First thing we will do is go to our Solution Explorer on the right of our project here. Um, again, we're picking up from where we left off and Part 4A, which I guess I just called Part 4. Should be doing Part 5, but I decided to kind of group these next couple of videos together. Um, let's see here. Let's go to our Screen Manager folder and into Screens, and then we will right click and add a new class. And this class will be called Title Screen simple enough. As with all future screens, uh, they are always going to inherit our values from the base screen. So we'll say inherits base screen first off. Now we're going to set up a couple of uh, variables for fun here. Uh, what I plan to do is create a color cycler uh, to create sort of a flashing effect for our X and A logo. So uh, we'll just say private anytime. That's going to be our animation timer. That's going to be a double. We'll set it to zero. And now we're going to capture the RGB values and cycle through them. So we're just going to capture each one individually as an integer. We'll say private R for red as integer and we'll set the default value to zero <clears throat> which I think is black I can never remember if the 255 is black or the zero I think the zero is black and 255 is white so uh, or the highest uh, saturation value I guess is what that is anyway uh, green value as integer also equal to zero and private blue as integer as well and let's just go ahead and set this one to 192 and now we're going to create a randomizer so we'll say private R&D as our random and this will equal a new random <coughs> Alrighty, so we now need a new sub, a handle input sub, which we actually don't really need. We're not going to use input for our title screen yet, um, but we'll go ahead and set it up for our future videos. Uh, we'll also be doing an overriding update and draw routine. So let's go ahead and go down to the bottom here and we will type public sub new and here is where we will give our screen a name so we'll say name equals title screen again name is uh, a value that is coming from our bright base screen that we set up before so that's a property we need to uh, populate and then we have to tell it the screen state so our state will equal active that's all there is to it. We've created a new screen. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our input sub. So we'll say public overrides. Wow, I'm having trouble hitting that B button. Oh, maybe my B button is not responding. Anybody want to buy me a new laptop? Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, sub, come on. Handle input, and we can just turn that off for now. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, next up, we will say public overrides sub update. This is where we're going to be updating our uh, flashing effect. Bring that down. And 
Now we need to go down and create our draw public overrides. Oh my gosh. Sub draw. Public overrides. Sub unload. And that's what we will use to dump our screen. Um, let's see here. We'll start out with our update routine. This is where we will put our flash effect. So I'm just going to say flash effect. And we're going to take our animation time and increment it by the total milliseconds. So we will say globals.gametime dot elapsed game time dot total milliseconds okay and if our animation time is greater than 100 milliseconds then we will set our red value to a random value say rnd dot next that selects the next random number and we're just going to set these from <clears throat> 40 to 200. And because those are our saturation values that we're using for our RGB up here, um, 200 will be the brightest and 40 will be the darkest. So we don't want it to be completely black uh, or it'll be kind of hard to see in there. We want kind of a brighter range. So. Uh, we'll do the same thing for our G or green value. We'll say next random number, also 40 to 200. And again with the blue, we'll say random next 40 to 200. So we'll get a bunch of you know random color values here uh, to draw. And finally, whenever we uh, do a timer loop, we need to reset our timer once it has expired. So we'll say animation time equals zero. And then it starts incrementing again with each update cycle. So then we just need to draw this. Let's go down to draw. And First, we're going to say globals dot sprite batch dot begin. And also, I like to set up my end one too, just so I don't forget it. Now we're ready to draw. Okay, so let's uh, do globals dot sprite batch dot draw. And we're going to need something to draw, so I'm thinking that rather than using little Rad Marvin's face again, like I did before for the background color, uh, I'd like to take a piece of a new graphic. Um, this is actually a, a menu graphic that um, Calamus One provided for me. I think he borrowed it from a, an internet site and I just kind of customized it and sort of made it my own here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to be using this uh, menu graphic right here. As you can see, it's just a. Uh, it's kind of actually two graphics in one. These little pieces we will be using in future uh, video episodes for creating uh, dialogues and custom menus and things like that. Uh, and this is just a gradient for filling. And like I had mentioned before, you can actually uh, take a grayscale image, which is a wonderful way to do this, and apply any color to this image using um, 
the sprite batch drawing coloring parameter so we can add a tint to it, to this to be whatever color we want but these are really handy I can grab just a a segment of this and use that uh, much like we would in like a web design or HTML to create a gradient across the screen uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in this menu graphic to my project pretty simple and what I will also have to do, if you remember back a ways, we are going to have to go into our globals and add that to our textures. 